Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the video series. Yeah, I'm outside today, thought I'd mix it up a little bit so you get to hear all the people mowing their lawns as we talk about today's chart type, which are bubble charts or bubble nested charts. It's basically using circles to make comparisons. And when you use that sort of chart type, you can have the circles next to each other. You could have them nested within each other. There's lots of ways to do them. They don't always allow you to discern the exact quantities captured by the circles. And some people do them the wrong way. And so you'll see today in our video with Randy Crum from InfoNoot or CoolInfographics.com that there are right ways and wrong ways to use this sort of chart. So I'm gonna hand it over to Randy so you can learn a little bit more about this chart type. Hey John, thanks for inviting me. So today we're gonna to talk about uh, visualizing data with bubble comparisons or circle comparisons, uh, also known as proportional area charts. And the idea here is to compare multiple data values amongst themselves so that you can see the difference between the set of data uh, by using these size circles. And there are a handful of ways to do this. And the idea is that the area of these circles is going to visually represent um, the differences in this data set that you're working with. So let me show you an example. So this first example is from Visual Capitalist and is showing the uh, top 10 most valuable brands in 2020. Um, and you can see the data points and you can see here are the top uh, 10 valuable brands. Um, and they're all size circles. Uh, that are sized to correspond to the data, uh, the, the value uh, of each of those brands. And they're, you know, a uh, comparison for bubbles or circles is usually lined up like this um, so that you can scan right across the page or across the screen um, and pretty quickly um, see the comparison, see the differences between the data points. Um, and so this is a pretty general use of a bubble comparison. And then another use um, might be something called nested bubbles. And so the idea here is the nested bubbles is if you are only looking at maybe two or three or a really small number of data points, um, if you stack them, putting the smaller bubbles on top of the larger bubbles, it actually puts them all into a very tight field of view. And so you don't actually have to scan across the whole page or across white space to do the comparisons. You can do all the comparisons in that single field of view without looking uh, off to the side to be able to tell the differences. Um, and so here you can see the difference between the population of China, which is the really large red circle, and the population of the United States, which is a smaller blue circle. And you can instantly see this big difference uh, between a really large population and the really small population. Now, there are a handful of reasons that I like circles, and a lot of designers and a lot of readers and members of the audience like uh, circles as a data visualization. The, uh, the round shape of circles appeals to a lot of people. It is uh, an organic shape that's a, a lot more approachable than some of the uh, more harsh, uh, sharp corners on, say, bar charts or line charts. Um, and so it becomes a data that's a little bit more easier to digest and isn't quite as, uh, like I said, quite as harsh. Um, and so it's a, a more approachable way to visualize data. Uh, can be a lot less intimidating to uh, audiences, especially non-data professional audiences as well. Now, if we look back at the uh, top 10 most valuable brands bubble comparison, there are a number of issues with visualizing data with circles um, that we run into. One of them is that humans can't do a good job of telling the difference between circle sizes. It's really, really hard for you to do. So if you look at uh, two values that are close together. In this case, look at the difference between, say, Facebook and Walmart, right? Those two brands have very similar values. They're different, but similar. Um, but I, looking at this chart, I, I know those circle sizes are different, and I can't tell the difference. I can't see it. Um, and so it circles or bubbles really work well when you've got uh, differences, pretty large differences in the values in the data set that you're working with. Um, the second issue is that when you do have a difference, it's still hard for all of us, for humans, to determine how big that difference is when you're visualizing with circles. So if you look at the difference for the, between the first two, so between Amazon and Google, um, I can see that Amazon's larger than Google, um, but without seeing the numbers, I can't tell how much larger the value of the Amazon brand is compared to Google's. I know it's bigger, but I can't tell is it 10% bigger? Is it 30% bigger? Is it 50% bigger? 
Um, I can't tell by looking at it. That's not a, an ability that we visually have as humans. Um, and so if it's something that you need your audience to understand, you need them to be able to know the exact differences between the, the, the values that you're presenting, you're going to have to show the numbers and they're going to have to do the math either in their head or do a calculation on the side to actually understand the details of those comparisons. The third issue with bubbles is that a lot of designers actually get the calculation of the circle size wrong. And this is one of my biggest pet peeves as a designer and even as a, as a critic of data visualization and infographics design, um, is that a lot of designers struggle with the math it takes to size circles. So let me show you an example of what happens. Um, so if we have two numbers, and we're going to make this a super, super easy data set to work with. Um, last year's sales was $1 million, and this year's sales is $3 million, right? And so I'm going to size this first circle to be last year's sales, and I'm going to make it super easy. It's going to be a circle with a diameter of one inch, and that's going to be the circle that represents last year. And then I'm going to visualize it this year's sales as this new circle that's three times larger. So the area of this circle is three times larger. This is the correct way. Uh, to visualize a bubble comparison of these two years of sales. Uh, what happens often is that designers will not triple the area of the circle when they're visualizing sizes. They will actually triple the diameter of the circle. So if they do that, this is what happens. So if you were to triple the diameter of that second circle for the current year sales, you would have to triple the width and the height of that circle object, and you end up with a circle that's actually nine times larger. And so now you've got good data on the page, but your circles don't actually visually represent the data that you're talking about. It's actually wrong. Um, so that's a simple uh, but not obvious formula to calculate circle sizes um, that a lot of people struggle with, but it's always in relation to the initial circle. It's always in comparison to the first circle you started with. Um, so the formula works with the diameter of the second circle, D2, uh, equals the diameter of the first circle, D1, uh, times the square root of the second set of data over the first set of data, X2 over X1. And so in our calculation, right, we would say the diameter of the first circle, which was one inch, so it's 1.0, um, times the square root of the new data, which is 3 million over the data of the first circle, which is 1 million. Here I've abbreviated that as 3 over 1 because um, that's the same result. And so what we end up with by doing that formula is 1.73 inches. And so that's the diameter correctly of that second circle, which is three times larger. Um, and I've been doing this for a long time. Years ago, I created this reference sheet uh, for designers to use that has this formula um, and examples of what happens when you uh, size all these circles correctly for some, some even multiples as an example. Um, and this is just a reference sheet that's uh, free to download off the InfoNoot website. And so that's visualizing bubble comparisons. Um, thanks for inviting me, John. And thanks to Randy for that great overview of how to use bubbles, nested or otherwise, and how to correctly size those bubbles according to your data. So until tomorrow, this has been another one of the One Chart at a Time video series. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something, and I'll see you tomorrow.